Where are we, Mark? Edmonds Waterfront Park. Back where we started. Birdie. Back where we started. We're filming our last video today. It's uh, nine months to the day after we began filming these videos I have right aged. here. I have aged. And Namu is still here, as we noted earlier. A little rougher. He's weathered. A little worse for the wear. That's our constant companion. As are many of my logic students, but stronger nonetheless. Mm -hmm. And Namu is a, an appropriate symbol to close with because the founder of logic, Aristotle, uh, was the first marine biologist in history, wasn't he? As far as I know. And uh, uh, Mark actually studied marine biology before he studied philosophy, didn't you? Turned out philosophy was easier for me to do well but, at. But he was originally like a marine biology major. Mm -hmm. Just like Aristotle. It's cool stuff. Mm -hmm. So we are we are uh, wrapping up this video series with this last lecture, and we want to talk about uh, what benefit is there, really, to studying logic. Every quarter, every single quarter, I teach logic. Every single class, at some point, midway, some student raises her hand and says, "Why am I here? Mm -hmm. Why am I learning this stuff? Why am I doing this to my GPA?" It's a perfectly good question. It's an honest question. It yeah. deserves short answers, medium range answers, long range answers. And I think it's worth some time just kind of chatting about it because sure. I think a lot of students like to be reminded why someone might take this class. Sure. So what's the point of studying logic? What good is it? Uh, what benefit is there? What you can do with it? What can you do with it? These are questions. Sure. We'll just kind of discuss them for a few minutes and, and uh, help put the class into perspective. Well, uh, what do you say when someone says that, Mark? Well, the short answer is, and this is a little bit flippant, I know about 80% of my students are taking formal logic to avoid math. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is the brightest idea, because frankly, I think math can be incredibly important. Mm -hmm. It has huge uses in all kinds of fields. Mm -hmm. Take math. If you don't think you like it, learn to like it. Mm -hmm. It's doable. In fact, after you take this logic class, however you're taking it online, on the campus or whatever, you're going to find those math classes you thought you couldn't do well at, you're going to do much better at. You're going to be used to this kind of way of thinking. You know, that's an interesting point. A lot of students uh, tell me that they thought they were, you know, bad at math, and after taking logic, they've discovered that they have more math abilities than they realized. Because they're used to using symbols, and you're... I, if you take a math class, there's probably a bunch of students in the class who are better at it than you, or have taken more. But you take a logic class, everybody in the room has never had logic before. It's really rare to find mm -hmm. students who have had a bunch of logic previously. So everybody gets to start off in the same, the same because place. Because it's not taught in high yeah. school usually. So I think that's, in my case, anyway, a lot of students take logic simply to fulfill a quantitative reasoning or some kind of symbolic reasoning requirement at their school. Mm -hmm. Others are taking it because their friends say it's fun. Um, I, I get a lot of science and nursing students who say, students taking nursing, uh, students like that are just required to take it. So there's a, that's kind of the quick okay, answer. It sometimes a, fulfills a requirement. All right, that's the flippant answer. That, it's a little bit flippant. All right. Then, uh, then I like to say that logic gives you experience and practice uh, in uh, thinking abstractly. Certainly, it's a very abstract subject, and a lot of people find abstract thinking difficult to do. It gives you mm -hmm. practice thinking abstractly. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to say that it also gives you practice thinking in a technical way. Logic's a very technical subject, meaning that everything is defined very precisely in great detail, and you have to think in the basis of precise definitions. Uh, and this kind of moves me to, to a, like a more developed, longer answer that I like to give, and that's kind of leaping over maybe a, still a shorter answer. So, as human beings, we are, we are rational. I would say we're social, rational, free beings. Don't ask me to defend all this right at the moment, but that's what I believe anyway. Mm -hmm. To the degree we are rational beings, and I'm not ruling out the possibility there's other beings in the universe that are rational, Martians, dolphins, angels, whatever. Mm -hmm. But to the degree we're rational, we want to be able to develop our rational abilities to be able to flourish and thrive as human beings. Now, logic is, formal logic is only really one slice of rationality. There's other things to think about. Um, there's other aspects of critical reasoning. There's aspects of human relationships. Emotions can be involved somehow. Uh, 
But to be a full flourishing human being, I need to develop all aspects, at least take steps toward developing all aspects of my human potential. This sounds a little fluffy, I don't mean no, it I this like way. This. Yeah. But this is basically the idea behind uh, the breadth requirements we have in universities. We're supposed to become a universal human, universalized. Plato and Aristotle started this idea. Mm -hmm. So we develop universities where people have to take all kinds of classes, even though they're not going to get a job in that particular field. So poets really need to take some logic, or some math, or some accounting, or some statistics to kind of work that part of their human mind. And the science people really need to take some poetry. I mean, if you're a computer scientist and do really well at logic, you need to take poetry because, believe it or not, you will get a boyfriend or girlfriend one of these days, and you need to write a love letter. Logic's not really great at love letters, but uh, it's good for other things. But we need to have a wide variety of things, and logic can help to develop that side of human nature which we may not have opportunities to develop in, in other ways. Yeah. So it's only one thing, but it's an important thing. That's a good answer. Yes, yeah. it, it broadens one's mind. It just it allows us to kind of develop our mind, mm -hmm. all slices of that uh, of mind, the pie of a mind, if you would, mm -hmm. just like a poetry class will help develop the, the computer engineers mm -hmm. aspect mm -hmm. of um, humanity. Sure, good. And that reminds me of a, another aspect I think that's worth noting. Logic has you think systematically. It gives you practice thinking systematically mm -hmm. in terms of a system where all the parts fit together according to precise rules and have precise relationships. And, and systematic thinking is a very important type of thinking also. It's not the be-all and the end-all of all thinking, but it's, it's, a, it's a type of thinking that's worth practicing. Yeah. And so the uh, technical, abstract, and systematic nature of logic, that kind of... <laughs> That kind of thinking, that's a ferry boat over there. That kind of thinking is the kind of thinking we see in mathematics, right? Mm -hmm. Computer science, and in fact, in most of the technical disciplines in the sciences. I'm lucky that where I teach at Bellevue College, I can pick any three classes I want to teach. And I always, for 20 years now, I've always picked two logic classes, some, some form of logic, and a third warm, fuzzy thing. Introduction to logic, Eastern philosophy, theory of art, social philosophy, things like that. I love that third class because it lets me talk about and discuss with adults some really interesting things that sometimes have very challenging answers. Trying to define art or what justice is in society isn't something you kind of crank out a little technique and get an answer to. But I love those philosophical issues. The logic classes, though, just give me time to relax. I realize there many times are correct answers, if you will. There are nice, clean, clear, black and white approaches to some aspects of life. Mm -hmm. So I, I really appreciate just the clarity that logic or things like mathematics can give, because it is actually part of, uh, of our existence. Mm -hmm. Well, and that reminds me of something that students often say to me. Uh, students will often say that before I took logic, I wasn't aware that there are very exact standards of correct reasoning. Mm -hmm. And uh, logic makes you aware of these things, that there are patterns of reasoning that are correct, there are patterns of reasoning that are faulty, yeah. and you, once you're aware of them, it actually helps you improve your reasoning, helps you improve uh, argumentative papers that you might write in school, but also it helps you improve argumentative writing that you might do at work yeah. or in other areas. The downside to this is you will become a social pariah. I found that before I really understood logic, I could just have conversations with people, and they could say the most idiotic thing, and i say, well, that's kind of cool, pass the beer. Now, and if you take logic, you, this is going to happen to you. You won't be able to help it. You're stuck with it. Someone will say something. You may even agree with the person, but you're going to be forced, congenitally compelled, if you will, to say, but wait a second. I may agree with your conclusion, but I'm not quite sure that your argument for that's very good. Let's see if we can't fix the argument. No one will want to listen to you. People will stop inviting you to parties, and you will be a social outcast. I haven't been invited to a party in 20 years. The only reason I get invited to a party is because people like my wife, they invite her, and they say, oh, if you want to bring that guy, you can. So there's a downside to logic. It really allows you to recognize basically BS when it's thrown your way, whether it's from politicians, advertisers, your friends, whatever. And you don't always have to respond and try to critique the argument, but you'll be wildly better at being able to detect junk when it's thrown your way. And that's going to be valuable no matter what you do in, in your life. Because there are certain correct standards of reasoning, and there are certain patterns of reasoning that are not correct. Yeah. And being aware of them is beneficial. It helps you reason better. And it also helps you, as Mark put it, detect BS, that is bad reasoning, mm -hmm. when it comes your way. Yeah. Bad so syllogisms. Are, 
Yeah, man, so it's very, very good. So there are benefits uh, and there are reasons to study logic and uh, it does do things for you. Yeah, I think back to just more pragmatic and practical responses. Um, anybody majoring in philosophy is going to need to take logic because you're going to need to be good at reasoning. Anybody who's going into law, whether they're going to be a lawyer or a paralegal, they're going to force you to take a bunch of logic mm -hmm. classes. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you get a chance to look at the LSAT tests, most of the questions are just really brain-dead logic questions. I shouldn't say that. Most of them are logic questions, mm -hmm. and they take a lot of thought if you don't know how to do it, but if you understand how logic works, you just you can come up with some answers pretty readily. Anybody going to computer science is going to want to take some logic because computers tend to think logically. Mm -hmm. So there, there's a number of very practical applications to logic, and not as many as I would say as algebra or calculus, but there are some very practical applications uh, depending on the fields you're going into. Yes, and, and different aspects of logic are used heavily in different fields. For instance, law uses a lot of analogical reasoning. Yeah because judges oftentimes have to make a decision based on precedent. Mm -hmm. That is to say, they have to find a case that's very similar to the case at hand, that is, that's analogous to the case at hand, and then make a decision that's coincident with the, with the precedent. So a, an analogical reasoning plays a big role in, in uh, the law. I just clicked it off, I, I, by mistake. Okay. okay, he's back on now. I'm back on. Okay, keep our finger. This this is an example of something where logic has absolutely no use whatsoever. You have to simply know not to turn the microphone off. But, but you're Dwight talking. figured out that something had ha but you figured out something had happened using logic. This is true to, to some degree. And using causal reasoning. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, in computer science, truth functional logic is used heavily because the the rules that govern the opening and closing of the little circuits inside a computer are. Uh, essentially the rules of truth functional logic. So truth functional logic plays a big role in computers, analogy plays a big role in logic and in medicine. I mean, logic has uses in many different technical I, fields. I hear that that bell, which yep. logically tells me a big noisy train's going to be here within 30 seconds. Yes. So maybe we should wrap it up. Let's see. So I have really enjoyed working yeah. with you, Mark, on these videos the last nine months. It's been fun. I've learned a lot. I've, lear I've learned things, and I've enjoyed it a lot. And we've really enjoyed working with Dwight, haven't we? Yep. Filming behind the camera. Dwight's there behind the camera. Uh, he's just been great to work with. Yeah. But I've really enjoyed working with you. I've never worked with you closely before because we're at two separate colleges. We've heard about each other, but it's good to finally get something together. Uh, we've done a few things yeah. together, yeah. a few conferences and things. But I've enjoyed this. I know you have. Uh, we really hope that this, these videos are helpful to you as you study logic. And good luck with it. And good luck with it. And uh, thank you very much for all of your attention in these videos. Is that the end? I think that's the end. Thank We're you. We're there.